Hello friends, this is my final video in my CitizenCon coverage. If you'd like to see everything I covered for the event, the playlist will be linked down below. This will be an explanation of the server meshing backend system that is meant to turn Star Citizen into an MMO that might someday play with the big kids. It's a pretty big topic, and I hope this video can help to summarize everything we've learned up until October 27th, 2021. Thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. Thanks to my newest Patreon supporters, Gary Albano and John Dole. The goal of MMOs has always been to create immersive shared worlds that feel like they encompass an entire player population. Technology has always been the limiting factor here. Star Citizen will also be subject to these limitations. But the developers have decided to take a unique approach to the problem that will be scalable, reliable, and relatively simple. First, we will take some time to understand how the Star Citizen universe works as a whole, just to get everybody caught up. At the end of 2018 and 2019, client-side and server-side object container streaming were implemented into the game. In Star Citizen, the entire game environment consists in multitudes of nested containers inside one another. These containers can be rocks, planetary areas, singular moons, spaceships, outposts, asteroid belts, or even your gun. You can see in this diagram that the Stanton Star from the current in-game system contains multiple planets which each contain their own moons, which are all containers with their own space stations, and etc. This will be repeated all the way down to simple objects, as containers inside of containers. Your own player character is seen as an entity made of other child entities. This is made most apparent in the new inventory management system. Each container can be separated and streamed in and out independently of everything it's connected to, in order to handle the vast amount of data that all of this would require hence the name Object Container Streaming. It's important to keep some of these other names in mind. Object Container Streaming, Bind Culling, and other things are additions to the game that may sometimes be seen as a waste without an immediate effect, but these various pieces of technology have led to the current work being done on server meshing. Now let's talk about Entity Streaming. Streaming allows for the game to load in these various containers and entities at different times, generally based on the location of a client or player, essentially creating a bubble of consistently streaming in and out objects. This is a key part of the seamless no-loading screen environment that has continued to be one of the key features of Star Citizen. Interestingly, the physical streaming in cutoff point is 5 pixels. So if you're far enough away from a ship that is represented by less than 5 pixels projected onto your 1080p screen, it physically won't even be there to show up. But as far as the game is concerned, it will be. So you can scan and detect it, but you might not be able to see those 5 pixels. With this in mind, we will move forward with the knowledge that in this setup which we currently have, the server is static and the client is activating the stream. The problem with this approach is that you end up with everything on the game server always being streamed in, with players moving around all the time. This is what currently happens in Star Citizen and is why performance tends to struggle when more players spread out throughout the game. It obviously affects the performance and nullifies the server-side streaming. This is a possible explanation for why the feature didn't seem to make as much of a difference as its client-side counterpart. But that's not the biggest problem we currently have. Right now, you can hop into Star Citizen server with 49 other people, and once it fills up with people, another one starts. Each of these servers contains a single instance. But because all information is linked to each server and therefore instanced separately, once a server crashes or closes, specific progress is lost. And if you don't load in on the same one, things will be different. This kills the sense of persistence, progression, and the belonging. Let's go over a few terms. Servers, shards, and clients. Shards will use the servers to simulate an environment for the clients. That's us. But the relationship is a bit weird. Luckily, we have some time. 
Server meshing is meant to connect every server together. Well, in a mesh. This is meant to constantly sync and share data across each server inside of this mesh, and all of the players within. But with thousands of players at hypothetically 50 players a server, you'll be constantly spinning servers up, adding new strands to this web, and exponentially complicating the system. I think we can all imagine how that could end badly. Instead, CIG will be taking a different approach than originally planned. This is the key change in the system, and the main focal point of this talk. CIG will be separating the replication of data and information and the simulation of the game. This is done through a new replication layer, which is tasked with two major responsibilities. It acts as a pipeline to keep all aspects of this game system connected. The servers that we play on, the players or clients who experience those servers, and the entity graph. This is the long-term true knowledge of the Star Citizen Shard. It is a constantly updating graph that contains all of the information that streams in and out. This entity graph, representing the brain of the game, will be seeded with the default starting objects of all areas in the shard, starting from the universe route, down to the planets in each system, onto the moons in their orbit, and including all objects below and in between. It will use the replication layer to keep the true record of everything occurring, while collecting and feeding constant updates to every server that is streaming in new data for players. Such as on the screen, as server 2 updates the replication layer with its own data, that data is then passed on to server 1, and as server 1 updates the replication layer, the data is passed to server 2. Now, instead of simulating the moving client with a streaming bubble inside of a server, the server is the streaming bubble. Essentially, turning every server into a roaming client with the ability to actually report everything it simulates back to the separate replication layer, which can then report those changes to the entity graph, and of course every other server that might at any point need to stream in the content in question. This way, anytime you enter an area, the server that boots up to stream that area to you already has everything it needs to know to provide you with the proper game. So if a massive system only has 5 people on it in different areas so they are streaming in, say, less than 5% of the star system, everything that happens at those different locations will be logged and sent to the replication layer to update the entity graph so that every other player gets updated information. The best part is, if a server you're on crashes for any reason, the simulation will pick right back up when you're able to reconnect. With these servers now maintaining separate parts of the environment, the larger responsibility of holding this all together falls on the shard. These shards aren't exactly the same as servers though, but we'll get into that. First, it's important to note that even when this first version of server meshing comes online, we'll still have a large amount of shards, or for our own current situation, servers. The tech will allow the number of players in each shard to begin to grow, and the goal will be to slowly decrease shard numbers. Now back to the technical side of a shard, while in other games a player character may be locked to a server, Star Citizen's shard system will allow players to transfer over to the other regions with less issue. Due to the presence of a global database that transcends each shard, all shards will be up to date with your character info, belongings, and reputation, so that you can continue your story in any shard you like. A bit like the server behavior in the early alpha. However, I did say, less issue. While your character, progress, and most entity-linked data will remain, the states of objects will differ between these shards running the same universe in parallel. But more on that in a bit. This point in the panel goes into depth on the entity graph. It goes into a lot of detail about why this system is difficult and what they're trying to do to make it happen. I won't touch on too much detail here, but you can see the immense amount of objects all containing unique properties that make up something such as a spaceship. The graph structure of the entity graph discussed earlier has proven to be key in minimizing the amount of work needed to be done to make sure the replication layer is updated on things like vehicles leaving ships, or ships attaching to docking tubes. These are just two of the examples of interactions that can be called on by the entity graph, such as the recently revealed stow and unstow commands, which move entities from that global inactive database I mentioned when not in simulation, to the shards when they are in use. This is happening whenever you use the new inventory system, and corresponds to every object in the whole game.
So with these shards and the way CIG is describing they will be split up, there will need to be some way to get placed in the shard that you are normally playing on, or that your friends and items are on, or that that recent friendly stranger who gave you a quick ride was on. A matchmaking service has been created by CIG that will be used to automatically place you into the shard that makes most sense based on all of these parameters and more. So you, your friends, your org, and the people you usually interact with will factor into the shard that you play in. This may be geographically based much like the current setup with regions, but we should be able to jump between shards by choice, so that might not be a limiting factor. Okay, so we've talked about how these shards will run in parallel of each other, and very briefly mentioned the global database. Let's talk about how these things interact. You could liken each shard to a server in a game like New World. These are like separate versions of the same game, where you might not have the same house, weapons, or armor. You may even have a different character. In Star Citizen, shards will be different from this, because of that stow and unstow ability. Each shard will be able to stow and unstow items from a global overarching database into a shard database. This means that every shard can pull from that global database so that your items and belongings are always the same no matter which shard you're playing on. Every inventory you access could actually be storing all items in the global database, and these items wouldn't even be simulated in the game until they are acted upon by yourself. This of course extends to all of your belongings, though the jury is still out as of this recording on how bases and permanent items will work. We've had some clarification via different avenues on some details though, it has been confirmed that while you and your objects may move over, these shards will essentially be different timelines. With a game that aims to have global economy with far-reaching events, alien races, and shifts in politics and war, it's going to be very interesting to see how they avoid jarring changes to these shards just to maintain the overall narrative, despite what could be a unique situation on that shard. While your personal story may feel seamless and like one huge continuous space opera, the overall world may not. And while we've always looked towards a grand story playing out, the marketing, foundation, and fundamentals of the game have always pointed towards a more curated and personalized experience for every person. The main issue with this panel was that it opened up just as many questions as it answered. And those questions could be as non-committal as those that were answered that day. That is to say, because this is such a developmental technology in this application, I don't think there's any way to know just how far this technology can be pushed in the immediate future. Will we be able to join 200 org members in a fleet battle? We still don't really know the real world implications of all of this. There is a Q&A coming up that should have some good answers if we get some good questions. We likely won't learn anything game changing, but I'll be sure to cover the info we get on my second YouTube channel, Space Tomato 2. Until then, here are the benefits we can summarize from this system. We won't be locked to any single shard, so we can still move in between and play with anybody that we want to. Due to the localized nature that servers will be functioning in, game performance should increase across any star system we're in. Simulation and replication is separated, allowing for simplified updates to all entities which need updates. This feature also allows players to maintain an active connection even if the server crashes or 30Ks, keeping everything up to date. This separation is the new key to this model of server meshing, which already exists as a proof of concept in other projects and demonstrations that can be found elsewhere. Unfortunately, we have just about no idea where we are on all this. We received a bit of an update on server meshing during the panel, which was basically summed up to... The first version of this technology will contain a static server mesh. Instead of the fully dynamic mesh that we saw earlier, the static mesh assigns server nodes to predefined sections of the solar system. This will reduce the amount of authority transfer that game code has to address in this first release. There's clearly a ton of work that needs to be done to update every service in the game to take advantage of shards, so I don't expect to see anything reach the game regarding this before the next CitizenCon at the earliest. I'd love to be wrong, and I'm hoping it's not longer but that's about what I expect from this panel. I'm happy to finally see a working concept with a relatively full explanation of the system and feel more confident in the feasibility now that we're hearing about limitations and specific goals. I'm waiting to see how this will all be presented to the player though, whether with a system like Elder Scrolls Online or possibly an experience like what Scavengers aims to offer with Spatial OS. And we will still be waiting for more details on when for some time. 
But if you'd like updates regarding server meshing or Star Citizen as a whole, consider subscribing to this channel. And if you want to see the rest of my CitizenCon coverage, you can find the playlist in the video description. Unfortunately, this will be the final video in my CitizenCon coverage this year, but I may host a live rewatch of the Tony Z talk on stream. So check me out on Twitch below if you'd be interested in that. And if you'd like to keep discussing these topics or just find a relaxing place to play some games and talk with others, come join us on the Garden Discord server. And if you'd like to help support all this, you can always join my Patreon community as well for as low as a dollar a month. I hope you learned something in this video and I'll catch you in the next. Thanks to my top supporters, TK, Ken Garcia, Valiant15, The Alpaca, Holston Coop, The Huntress, Dasek, Guilty Conscious, Extreme Tuber 7, El Gordo, Jarzy, Niku, Jin, Bilal Eliasem, and Brian Peterson.